Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second quarter final of the Arabia 1v1 Invitational Tournament. Sponsored by the Chinese Age of Empires community and brought to you by the Boobly community team. Um, I'm SMB and I'll be your guide through today's games as we enjoy this clash between one of the most highly rated rising stars of AOC, Mr. Vic Vinchester, and the living legend himself, Chris. Otherwise known as El Clan Chris and the highest achieving, highest earning Age of Empires 2 player of all time. Those of you who have been following the tournament up to yes. now will already be familiar with the long, long road that these players have faced to reach the quarterfinals with the 24 tournament participants battling out in over 200 games to reach this stage. We are now down to just eight players though um, and we've still got a few minutes before the games begin so I would like to take this opportunity to remind those of you who are perhaps less familiar of how the players actually got to this quarterfinal stage. Starting with Vinchester and parachuting into the tournament as a very, very late replacement for Lang, CBJ Lang that is. Um, Vinchester set about catching up to the Group B pace setters, pace setters Mr. Yo and Tyrant Fire in double quick time, claiming victory against all opponents except Yo himself and setting up a group deciding clash against Fire. Vinchester started slowly and things looked grim for him, down 2-1 in game 4 and having lost control of a hill that overlooked his main gold and his second gold pile, he looked to be spiralling out of the tournament. That was until he heavily exploited the market to buy himself stone, and taking advantage of a rare moment in which he could push fire off the hill, he completed his castle. Back on gold and now possessing some crucial map control, he banked on going to the Imperial Age ahead of fire who remained in the castle age and the gamble paid off for him. From there, the power of the Goths Huskars won Vinchester the game, setting up a single decisive Hun War in Game 5. A single game which was worth $175 or more, as well as a place in the quarterfinals, and having lost the first Hun War in Game 1, Vinchester was able to turn things around in dramatic fashion. He emerged victorious and booked himself a place in the quarterfinals to face the winner of Group D. That winner of Group D would ultimately prove to be Chris. But that in itself was in doubt until the dust had settled on the group's final game. Chris made a fantastic start to the tournament, including a 3-0 demolition of Loiza, but losses to backed and surprise mm -hmm. package Whoop left him trailing the Chinese player as the group heading into the final headed into the final games. Whoop had looked all but assured to earn a quarter-final place, needing just a few points from his final two sets against Doubt and VNS Yellow. By this point, Whoop had established himself as a credible knockout stage favourite in the eyes of onlookers. But a comprehensive 3-0 loss at the hands of Doubt set his chances back, and this was compounded by a surprise 3-1 loss at the hands of VNS Yellow, who claimed his first and only victory of the tournament versus a player who had been dispatching all comers until his final games. Whoop's sudden change of fortunes was perhaps most exemplified by his loss of Mongols versus Britons, having taken control of a vitally important hill with castles and elite Mangidae, only to get pushed off the hill and right back into his base by a never-ending horde of Britons trash from Yellow. Whoop's defeat left Chris assured of qualification, but it would still come down to the final games of the group, backed versus Loiser, to decide whether he would win the group and face Vinchester in the quarter-final, or finish second and face the perilous prospect of a clash with Mr. Yo. Despite having nothing to play for, Loiser defeated backed in a fifth game, sending the Vietnamese crashing out and clinching first place for Chris, with Doubt emerging as a previously unlikely qualifier in second place to face Mr. Yo in the quarter-final. So, without further ado, let's head into the games. The timing was virtually perfect there. Um, we do have a long spectator delay of four and a half minutes, but that has now counted down, and we are heading into game one any second now. And here we go. We do have Vinchester in the top right corner of the map, in blue as the Huns, and Chris in the red in the bottom left corner of the map in so, as in every other game this tournament, we have a Hun War in Game 1. It's one of the most played settings in Arabia in Age of Empires 2. One of the most fast and dynamic and varied settings. And will make for a very exciting beginning to this series. Um, talking a little bit about the players, uh, I would probably give Chris a tiny little bit of an edge on just based on his experience here. He's uh, been a top expert player for so long. Um, won so many tournaments in the past that he certainly has the know-how to win any tournament set. That will be Chris in the red over here. Um, 
Meanwhile, Winchester is a very, very young, up and coming player from Russia, has really emerged onto the expert scene uh, explosively in the past couple of years. Very exciting player, and I'll be looking forward to, to uh, see if he can potentially upset the experience of Chris today. All the matches that you see today will be played on Arabia, uh, which is the map for this tournament, as it is the Arabia 1v1 Invitational. Um, it's considered the most competitive land map for its openness, um, and one where players really test their metal against each other. So, with that in mind, let's go and have a look at these maps then. For Winchester, he's, you can see that he's got two wood lines pretty close to his town centre, both of which are quite nice. This one potentially harassable later on, but he's always got this one to retreat to, which isn't as terrible as you always see, as you sometimes see when you have these oases interrupting and interfering with your wood line. Main gold is forward in terms of direction towards Chris, but it's really not very far from his TC, um, and I don't think you'll have too much of a problem defending that. Ball and just nice of Winchester there. Thought it was going to be slightly outside of his TC when the ball started to run back, but just fine. Second gold, not too far away, can be shielded by some walls with the aid of these cliffs. And third gold is kind of in a difficult spot considering that there's a it's quite far away and there's a cliff around it. But you can TC this area. Um, main stone quite close to his TC and in a different area from the gold and the other stone. I think if Chris decides to come forward then he'll probably be looking to attack this area um, so Winchester will probably be okay to retreat to this main stone to get any up any defensive counter towers if he wishes to. Meanwhile taking a look at Chris's map we can see that it's a lot more open across the front not as much easy walling that he could do with who compared to Winchester with this forest for example and up around here does however have two very nice gold locations in the back towards the edge of the map. Th um, this is pretty rare actually in that his third gold is really not far from his TC. Um, it is kind of exposed but certainly TC a ball. Um, and main gold is quite close to his town centre as well, uh, not in a terribly exposed location. And actually if he does at any point decide to use a tower to protect his main gold, he'll also be uh, using that to protect some of the rest of his economy as well given that berries and wood both in this area. So um, Chris able to shield quite a lot of his economy um, towards the rear of his TC. Um, he may even consider a little wall here to kind of funnel it towards the back of his funnel all of aggression around this side which he can then defend with his army and tower and maybe even a little palisade across the back here to stop Winchester from running 360 degrees around his base. That said, um, he does only have this one wood line to immediately fall back upon. Um, if that gets towered or anything, maybe from around here, then he could be in a spot of trouble. Looking at the players, then we can see that Winchester is going to opt for a drush with this uh, pretty defensible map that he does have. Whilst Chris was uh, on th three villages on wood for quite some time, so... Um, he is more than likely opting for a scout rush, uh, in fact clicking up just now on 21 population at 7 minutes 35 which is very fast indeed. So he's quite likely to be hitting the feudal age more or less as Winchester's uh, militia arrive at his base but we can see um, and perhaps unusually Winchester going for a fourth militia so he could well be thinking about some kind of man at arms play here. Uh, we have seen a ton of man at arms plays in the Arabia 1v1 Invitational. For me, that's been one of the most interesting developments in the professional meta game late, lately. Um, man at arms very much coming into fashion uh, in combination with tower forwards, archery range forwards, and really just sometimes even adding in four, five, six, seven man at arms. Of course, in the early feudal age, they're so difficult to counter um, for the first few minutes, certainly until a decent number of archers are on the field and I think that is why we have seen so much more man at arms oriented, so many more man at arms oriented plays in this tournament. So let's see how Chris can actually defend this man as this play. Just about to hit the feudal age, he's going to have his barracks up nice and safely, um, not getting interrupted there. Some quick walling going on, going to be able to seal in his berries and his 
wood for now, yes. so Man at Arms won't be picking off villagers on those resources. But at this point, it does deny him access to his gold pile, and Chris will have to work hard to actually reclaim that. He's somewhat lucky that Winchester is not uh, a comp already up to the feudal age and accompanying this with or on his way to the feudal age even um, and accompanying this with forward villagers to try and uh, drop ranges and towers perhaps around Chris's base in the next minute or two. You can see that Chris, although he did go up on 21 population, um, seeing these four militia and expecting the man at arms upgrade to come in, he perhaps changed his mind from the, the scout rush that he was probably planning, instead dropping an archery range. Because he'll have to look to counter these militia and the man at arms upgrade that may be coming in for Winchester. You can see over here that Vinchester probably sent a weak villager to uh, come and get this deer because that scout from Chris did actually pick off Vinchester's villager in double quick time there. Um, it was, wasn't much long after I heard the attack notification that the villager was down. So one villager down, that's first blood for Chris. Um, and it's always a pain to lose a hunter um, because they're usually carrying a lot of food if they've been hunting that deer for any amount of time, potentially up to 35 food. So it's almost a, a double loss to lose a villager carrying so many resources. See, Vinchester uh, has had four on gold for quite a long time. So um, he may be thinking about following this up with a more fast castle oriented strategy judging by uh, the resources that he has in the bank alternatively could be going for their man at arms into double archery range feudal play um, going to drop a tower on his main goal even though it's quite defensible and that he's building this shield across the front of it and getting double bit axe and horse collar as well so signaling his intention to stay in the feudal age for uh, for now and not just race on up to the castle age He's going to have to do something to defend against this trash that is now circling around his berries. A few skirmishers, uh, one spearman and a scout, not really going to have terrible uh, attack power to take down villagers. But as long as Winchester remains downhill, that isn't necessarily going to be the case. And I really don't think those villagers should be taking this fight for too much longer. Already one villager going down. And Vinchester needs to get out there before he loses a second. So that's now three villagers down for Vinchester. He's really not, uh, tr d doesn't seem to have retreat on his mind at all. Prepared to lose even a fourth villager, it feels like here. That one might just about escape. It's on five HP if the skirmishes can get good shots. No, it's going to escape on four HP. But I don't know why Vinchester was so willing to risk losing multiple villagers there. Meanwhile, he's trying to make his drush pay off at the, um, on Chris's base. Didn't choose to get the Man at Arms upgrade in the end, perhaps motivated by the fact that he could see all these walls and knowing that the Man at Arms upgrade may be wasted in that case. And it feels like the skirmishers will just be able to chase away those militia from Chris's base. Um, a few skirmishers continuing to fight over on this hill. Uh, Vinchester emerging victorious from that with a couple of skirmishes left but that forward trash army from Chris certainly did the damage certainly earned the resources back that he spent on it and more taking out three villagers and on the, the deer and the berries Vinchester now going into that archer transition does have five villagers on gold so he's gone and he did have that for quite a long time 300 gold actually in the bank so he's going to be able to continue producing archers for the foreseeable future at a good rate and beginning to stockpile enough food that he might be thinking about going up sort of soon would of course be able to go up a lot faster if he hadn't lost those three villages on the berries and the deer meanwhile chris kind of low on resource count uh, having been doing a, a number of skirmishes from two archery ranges now but getting in wheelbarrow and with a good number of farms i anticipate that he'll be able to uh, go up to the castle age not too far into the distant future in the game vinchester meanwhile is going to prowl around the edge of the map try and look for a way to harass uh chris but chris is doing really well here i think getting extra line of sight with his buildings that he's putting up 
creating an outpost on this oasis so that Vinchester can't just sneak onto the shoreline and start to harass the wood villagers and using the blacksmith to prevent Vinchester from actually circling all the way around this wood line. Really nice uh, map awareness from Chris there. But Vinchester is on his way to the castle age. Continuing to produce archers in the meantime. As we can see, multiple archers gar garrisoned in both of these archery ranges. And when he gets there, he'll probably be able to do the crossbow upgrade and the bodkin arrow fairly soon. And at that point, uh, Chris will have a tough time defending against the crossbows with their extra range and attack power with just feudal age skirmishers. Vinchester is going to run into Chris's army in the middle of the map so he knows to keep those uh, archery units of his own away from Chris's skirmishers and at least until the castle age kicks in because he never wants to lose those units whilst the castle age upgrade is being researched and before you manage to actually turn your troops into their castle age equivalents. Padded Archer Armour coming in as well for Vinchester on the way there. So his food economy is in really good shape and he's probably feeling confident about being able to get in uh, crossbow and bodkin in addition to the Padded Archer Armour immediately upon hitting the Castle Age. We can see that Chris was just under two minutes slower to the Castle Age so that will give uh, Vinchester around a two minute window of opportunity where he'll have the technological advantage to try and uh, inflict some damage upon Chris's economy. We can see that there's a five villager difference so he'd really like to be picking off a couple of extra villagers at least of Chris's during this window. Upgrades kicking in right now uh, so let's see what these uh, soon to be crossbowmen are actually able to do. If we watch from Chris's point of view with the units by arm, we can see when he is going to see these units appearing on the edge of his town. Fortunately, that spearman didn't quite provide him with any advanced warning, just missing the angle of attack from the crossbows, and that enables Vinches to pick up two easy kills on the farms really, really quickly, and he may now be able to sneak onto this oasis. Chris is pulling his wood villagers away, but he doesn't have anywhere to go with those to continue gathering wood. He's actually going to head right into the west corner of the map, as we can see on the minimap now. That's probably a lumber camp. But for now, Vinches is picking up a third villager on the farm, idling ten or more villagers that are on this mass exodus across the map and picking up uh, more and more idle time on Chris's farms. Chris only now hitting the castle age. Vinchester needs to be careful not to walk into all these skirmishes here. No sense in taking away, taking all of that damage. But equally Chris has to be careful because he could so easily be out microed by those extra range crossbowmen versus the feudal age range of the, the feudal units. So Bowsaw coming in for Chris to try and uh, recoup some of that lost wood gathering that he's had going on ever since all those villagers ran over here. Um, but only getting crossbowmen and not bodkin arrow um, for now, which is going to mean that he's at a disadvantage when taking this fight, both in terms of range and damage. I just heard a university coming up for Chris, so he's going to be perhaps shooting for an early ballistics to try and push... Vinchester away from his town and get the advantage in the fight. Looks like Vinchester is actually heading over to this corner of the map here. He may well find these villagers in the corner which would be a death blow but for now he's actually uh, just choosing to out micro Chris using the additional army power that he has and also bringing in cavalry archers on the farmland picking up more villager kills potentially but certainly increasing idle time and Vinches has actually thoroughly out microed Chris over here and Chris choosing to call GG's eco is a mess he can't add villagers to wood 